welcome to episode four of Craft Chocolate TV. Today we're going to talk about grinding. So we take the nibs and we load them into a grinder with stone wheels here and they just start crushing it up and it's kind of like taking peanuts to peanut butter. You can see here, this is a small version. We started with a bunch of these. It was uh, a good way to learn but not a good way to start. But these are uh, Premier Wonder grinders. We started with little Cocoa Town grinders and the stones just literally crush up the nibs. We can see that better over here in the bigger grinder, which we're gonna tilt. So that's what happens to nibs. This is where we add sugar. Nibs turn into that consistency in a few hours. We then can add sugar at various times, which is gonna lock in certain flavors. There's a lot of vinegar in certain types of beans, a lot of acetic acid. And when you load the nibs in the grinder, a lot of that starts to volatilize. So if you add sugar really soon, you're gonna keep in or capture a lot more of those flavors than if you were to wait. Um, so yeah, that'll affect flavor and that's a judgment call by the chocolate maker. So we just use regular organic cane sugar. And when we load the sugar in, in these grinders, it takes a, a minimum of three or four days before we're starting to get fine enough that it becomes difficult to taste the grittiness of the chocolate. Um, we're going for below 20 microns. As these grinders age, we tend to get uh, less and less of a fine grind. And so as we've scaled up, we want a better texture. And so we use machines called ball mills. There's also a machine called a uh, roller mill or a five roll refiner. And these two machines are really good at getting the texture of your chocolate, the micron size, to the point where when you eat a piece of chocolate, it's very smooth and creamy. And the distribution curve of these microns are very close together. So in these grinders, imagine a piece of sugar is going around and around and never actually going under the stones and fracturing. Whereas some go under those stones and fracture repeatedly. So you might end up with five microns, you might end up with some that are 25 microns. And when you eat that piece of chocolate, it's not gonna feel as smooth or silky as if all those microns were more evenly ground, as in a ball mill. So in our ball mill, the way it works, um, there's something like 80,000 of these little ball bearings, and there's a shaft that runs in the middle, and as these arms agitate the balls, they rub together, and that's what is evenly refining the nibs and the sugar together as it recirculates through this process. So in three hours, we can refine a lot more chocolate, a lot better. And a, a five roll or a three roll refiner works in a similar way where um, everything that goes through these two stone, two rollers are very close together. So anything that exits that is going to be approximately the right size. So that's grinding and it affects texture a lot and there's a lot of acids that burn out at this phase. Uh, in these grinders, there's other things that you're gonna wanna do when you're emptying it. You're gonna want a bucket and then you're gonna want a strainer because certain nibs will be a little bit on the large side and you don't want any of that to go into the next step. Nibs and, and other foreign matters that might have made it in there that you don't want. You're also gonna want to scrape. Uh, any spatula or scraper will work. You'll just want to run it down the side and try and make sure everything that is stuck on the outside does start making its way through this process again. So what makes Kraft chocolate different is that we're very focused on the flavor of the beans. We want you to taste the origins, where it grew, even the season. And there's various ways that the American Kraft chocolate movement has taken it, where some chocolate makers don't add any cocoa butter, some do. We happen to add cocoa butter, and that's my own preference as a chocolate maker. We add anywhere between 5 and 10% for our dark chocolates. Um, but you don't have to do that. It does make the process easier for grinding, as well as the next step, which is tempering, where we're gonna structure the cocoa butter crystals together. This has been episode four of Craft Chocolate TV. Thank you for watching.